Hello there! My name is Susanna, I'm a harpist and a harp teacher, and today I will show you how to play Happy Birthday on the harp. I will start by playing the whole piece through, so you can hear what this beginner arrangement sounds like. to purchase the music for this mid-beginner arrangement, follow the link in the description of this video. The version that I just played is in F major, so it will work for liver harps tuned to flats and pedal harps as well. In the PDF with the music you will also find the version for harps tuned in C, so if your harp falls under this category, may it be with livers or without, I've got you covered too. Whichever version you pick, there are no liver or pedal changes, so nothing to move while you play. This piece requires using all four fingers, playing hands together, and some level of experience when it comes to directional placing, which is working out overlapping brackets. So this may likely not be the very first piece that you will want to work on when learning to play the harp, because you will need some basics covered before getting into this. However, at the end of this video I will also show you how to simplify this arrangement if you need to play Happy Birthday for someone very soon. I will also show you a simple trick that you can use if you want to learn Happy Birthday as a surprise for someone and you don't want them to accidentally overhear what you play. If you'd like to know my tip for secretive practice, stay with me until the end of this video. I will show you first how to learn this piece as it is, and when you know the practice strategy behind it, you can then use this extra tip if you're preparing a surprise. If you want to go through this piece with me right now, grab the music and your harp and let's get started. In this tutorial you will first get to know the structure of the piece, what are the different sections, which of them repeat so you won't have to learn them twice, and which ones are very different and may therefore be a bit more tricky. Then we will go together through the most challenging section of this arrangement, learn some strategies for putting hands together, and then I will show you how to connect two small sections once you know them. Before we start, if you play a liver harp tuned to the key of E flat, like me, you will need to set up the key of F major, so all your levers E and A will have to go up, and then they will stay like that all the way. Now, the first section is an introduction. If you're going to play to a group of people, this will serve as a signal to them about what's going to happen. And you are also giving them an indication of the key you're in, so they can pick it up easily and start singing along. This is this beat. Now, the next two sections start from the same note, and when you look more closely at the right hand part, you will see that they are very similar, only the last two notes are a step higher. The section after that also starts with the same note, but you can already see from the indicated fingering that it will be something quite different, because this is the first time where we are going to use the fourth finger. The last section starts from the same note as the first one, and when you take a closer look you will see that it's actually almost identical as the introduction, apart from the added glissando at the end. If you like visual cues, you can mark these sections using different colors to remind you what is the same, what is similar and what's different, like I did here. If you've been with me for a while, you may know that I rarely start practicing a piece from the very beginning. What I recommend to my students is to start from the trickiest spot, because then you naturally spend more of your practice time on this section and also you're using well the time at the beginning of your practice, where your mind is most alert and will find it easier to focus on tricky stuff. In this arrangement, the most challenging section is from the end of bar 6 until beginning of bar 8. And there are a few reasons for that. First, that's the only place where we will use four finger, going over quite a bit of a jump. Then, left hand only has one chord to play in bar 7 and tons of time, but I would like you to watch out for places like that. And I'd like to encourage you to look at long rests in the left hand, not as places where you can have a bit of a break, but rather as an opportunity to look forward and get your left hand ready for the next section, so you can give all of your attention to everything else that's going on there. So, how are we going to approach this section? Let's get to know our right hand first and only play end of bar 6 and beginning of bar 7. So we're going to place our forefinger on middle C and the thumb on the high C, and we're going to play 4, 4, 1, and come off. Pay 
attention to the fingers that are not playing, you want to keep them low and relaxed. Let's repeat that a few more times. Once you feel confident with that, let's see what happens next. After the 4-4-1 group, you're going to place your four fingers on a group of four notes going down. Here, it's important for you to notice that fingers 2-3-4 are moving in steps, while between the thumb and the second finger there is a gap, a skip. Practice placing this pattern thinking about fingers 2-3-4 staying close together and the thumb a little bit further apart. So you want to have your four fingers all coming on the strings together, like this. So practice coming on the strings, coming off, and doing that a couple of times. Now let's practice joining this group with what happens before. You really want to make sure that all four fingers come on the strings together as a group. You don't want to place only two or three and later search for the others. And that's why we will practice it this way. We will play at the end of bar 6, 4-4-1, four, four, and then we will quickly move to placing our group of 4. Let's do that two more times. In addition to playing and placing, you may also want to try playing the group of four notes as a chord, so going 4-4-1 four, four, chord. Once you feel confident with that, you can now play everything as written 4-4-1 four, four, one, place 1-2-3-4. One, Notice that although I'm playing everything slowly, almost ignoring the first two faster notes, I'm making sure to place my group of four really fast. It does take some time for our fingers to really learn where they are going, so feel free to pause this video and repeat a few more times on your own, or go back and practice this section with me again. When you're ready to move on, the next step will be looking at what happens in the left hand. In bar 7, your left hand plays a chord A and F, and then C and B at the beginning of bar 8, which is quite a bit of a jump. By the way, if your harp doesn't have the B string below the low C, instead of going down, you can jump up to middle C and B. So you can play F A and then middle C B. In either case, we need to make sure that left hand knows where it's jumping to. So let's first map out this journey for our hand and let's show it without playing which strings it will be landing on. So that's our FA, that's our CB. Let's start again. Place fingers 1 and 2 on the A and F, then move the same two fingers to C and B, again making sure they land together. Let's do that a few more times and while you're doing this, Try to get the feeling of the space between the two fingers getting smaller as you're getting ready to place on the two neighboring strings and also feeling the distance between where you're starting and where you're finishing. Same as for the right hand, you can then move on to playing both groups as chords. It does sound a bit funny, but that's okay, we are practicing. Once you can jump between the two groups real quick and land on the strings you want, you can now slowly play these two bars as written, a chord and then fingers 1 and 2. Remember, we are playing slowly, but we are placing fast and we're still aiming to, play, to place two fingers together. Some of you may ask me at this point, but Zu, why are we doing all this if we got a whole bar of rest before we need to play the left hand again? The reason behind it is that you really don't want to search for your left hand at the very last minute. You want to have it ready early so you can give more attention to what's happening right there and maybe also look a bit further ahead in the music. Now, let's put the two hands together, at last. First, let's show them both the journey they will need to make when moving from between, between the strings. So let's place the left hand on the first chord and the right hand on its first two notes. 
the middle C, high C, F A. And now, without playing, we will practice moving the right hand from here to the group of four notes that comes next. Remember that group? Let's remind our right hand of that change while we keep holding on to the left hand. So we're going to go 4, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Once you feel connected again to the right hand, put it back where you're first starting and show the left hand what's going to happen. So first the chord, then the group of two. Hold on to the right hand while you do this a few times. Now we will show the hands how to manage this that change while both of them are moving. So let's start again where we were before. Right hand four and one on, left hand two and one on the chord. And we will move now the right hand to our group of four. And once we check that it's safely there, we move our left hand to the group of two. All good? Let's do it again. Start by putting both hands back, right hand four and one on, left hand the chord with one and two, and then we move the right hand to a group of four. Remember, where's your gap between the thumb and the second finger? Then left hand going away from us to a group of two neighboring strings. And again, coming back, moving right hand, moving left hand. And now, if you're up for a little challenge here, try moving both of them together. Just give it a try. If you've done your practice the way I showed you before, I'm pretty sure you can do it right now. So we start with both hands where we had them earlier. Before you move, just remind each of your thumbs where they are going. So your right hand thumb aims for the A two steps lower, and your left hand thumb aims for going whichever red string you're picking. Let's go. You got that! By this point, your both hands know really well what's happening and where they are heading when they are off the strings. So now let's get to playing them together. Place both of them where they were before and we will start by slowly playing the right hand fourth finger. Then left hand and right hand will play together and move. So you will land with your right hand on the group of four and your left hand on the group of two. Let's play and move. Then you carry on playing the right hand. Thumb, second, and you join in with the left hand. Thumb of the left plays together with the right hand third finger. Four for the right hand plays with the left hand second. Do it again and remember, while you're playing slow, your aim is to move fast. As before, feel free to rewind this video and practice this whole section again with me. You've done a lot of good work here, so congratulate yourself. Well done! Because this was already quite a lot of information to take in, you may want to stop here and come back to this video tomorrow or whenever your next practice session is going to be. When you come back, go again through the steps we covered earlier for a little refresher before you carry on with the next section of the piece. Let's go back a bit to the end of bar 4, which also happens to be the end of the first line. Let's read slowly what the right hand is going to play in this section. You start with the second finger on the middle C, and when you look ahead to the next line, you will see that you need to play your thumb very soon. So let's place them both. Then you're going to play your second finger twice and you can hold on to your thumb while doing this. Then you place the second finger back on the same string, play the thumb, move the thumb to G, which is the next note that it needs to play. You play second finger, move it to F, Play G, play F. So you only need two fingers to play this right hand bit. Let's do it again. Let's have a look at the left hand now. You start with bar 5 and the chord G, C. And I suggest that you play this chord using fingers 1 and 3, because when you look at what's coming up later, you can see that you will need to use your third finger to play the same C string again right after that. 
for the group of three notes that comes next. Let's place the three fingers for that group, third on C, second on F, thumb on A, and as before, practice placing these three so they really land all together. So come off, come back again, repeat a few more times. Then you can also practice the change from the C G to the C F A chord like that. Your third finger stays in the same place, your thumb moves one string up, and then you pop your second finger onto the F. Let's now play that. A chord, then place the three fingers on, play the third, second, thumb. Let's do it again. Let's place the two hands together. Let's prepare both of them, left hand on the chord, right hand on the two neighboring strings. Let's play the right hand second finger twice and put it back. Now we're going to play the left hand chord while right hand only plays the thumb and holds on to the second finger. If you want, you can play just that a couple of times. It does sound a bit funny now that we practice, but it does fit well with the rest of the piece in the context. Now we will focus on moving the left hand. You can play the beginning of this section again, and now after the left hand has come off after the chord, you're going to replace it for the next group. Let's go. We play the second finger, place it back, play the thumb and chord, and place the third, second thumb back all together. You can stop here and do it again a few times, and again if you need to. Just go back in the video to practice this section from the beginning with me. Now we're going to play the remaining part of this section. You will see it circled in the music. Let's prepare our right hand and left hand to play the end of bar 5, beginning of bar 6. So left hand is set on the group of three notes we were practicing earlier, right hand is ready on the last two notes, the G and the F. We're going to tell our left hand third finger and right hand thumb to play together here and then continue with the rest. Let's do it again. And you can do it a few more times until it feels solid. Let's do it again. Now, we put this whole section together and we keep reminding our both hands what they need to do. We'll start from the end of bar 4 and the first message we will send to our left hand is after you play the first chord, your third finger will be back on the same string. Find where fingers 2 and 1 of the right hand belong. And once they are there, you can carry on to play the middle C that the right hand plays on its own. And then send a message to your hands saying left hand third finger, right hand thumb together. Now repeat this again a few times until you feel confident. The next step, maybe again you want to approach it in a new practice session, will be putting these two sections together. So we will go back to the circled section that we used earlier in the video, end of bar 5, beginning of bar 6, and we will show our hands how to get from there to the other section that we practiced before. By the way, can you see already which hand's task will be a lot easier than the other in bar 6? When you play what the right hand is about to do, play G, F, then come off and move on to an octave CC with the forefinger and the thumb, and then compare it with the left hand, which will play CFA, and then move on to playing the chord FA. You will clearly see that the left hand will find the move rather easy, as long as you remember to keep it close to the strings. So let's practice the right hand change a few times. First just placing, without playing, G, F, C, C, G, F, C, C. 
than playing while possibly adding the second group played as a chord. And finally playing all of the right hand. Ready to add the left hand? There we go. Let's prepare both hands and remind them left hand third, right hand thumb. Then right hand moves to an octave, left hand stays. Repeat the whole process a few times and do not hesitate to pause the video here or go back if needed. Now we are ready to put the two sections together. Let's revise what messages we are going to send to our both hands starting from end of bar 4. First, left hand goes back to the same string, then left hand third, right hand thumb playing together, then right hand moves to an octave, left hand stays, then both hands move, right hand thumb down two steps, left hand thumb aims for the red C string. Let's play all that now. Left hand goes back to the same string, then left hand third, right hand thumb playing together, then right hand moves to an octave, left hand stays, then both hands move. Can you see what practice strategy we've been following here? First, we look at just one short section at a time. We play one hand at a time and see if there are any jumps, meaning are there any places where either hand comes off the strings and needs to find its place again to carry on playing. And we practice these jumps to be able to replace back on the strings quickly. We do exact same thing with the other hand and then we practice mindful placing of both hands together. And for that we use a combination of placing without playing and playing slowly while stopping to move one hand elsewhere. Then you play bigger sections while keeping in mind that your aim for now is to play slow, but plays fast. If you've got more than one section ready, you then work on the connection between them first and then putting them together and playing both of them through. So pick a short section, start with one hand, look out for any jumps and practice these jumps, then work on both hands placing, play slow, plays fast, and then connect with other sections. If you carry on practicing like that, you will be able to play this piece with real confidence, even with other people singing or other distractions. Now, for the two tricks that I promised to show you. How to simplify this arrangement and also how to practice without somebody else realizing that you're getting a surprise ready for them. There are a few ways to make this arrangement easier. First is to play just the right hand part, which is the melody, and from time to time you may want to use your left hand to help in tricky places, like for example bar 7. The other way is to play the right hand part as it is and use your left hand to play exactly the same notes as the right hand, but an octave lower. This is a really good one if you want to play the full version in the future, as practicing like that means that you get to know your right hand part really well. Now for the sneaky practice tip. If you play a lever or a pedal harp, what you need to do is to go and set up your levers to a different key. Levers or pedals. The more random the setup, the better. I have set up my levers with all of them down, apart from D and G which are up. And now the piece sounds like this. Nice glissando at the end. 
If you could have guessed what it is, congratulations, because even I probably wouldn't recognize my own piece, especially if someone is practicing it very slowly and with one hand or one section at a time. And what's best, not only this makes a great cover for a nice surprise, but it's also a fantastic practice challenge for you. When you can't tell very easily by listening whether the note that you just played is the one you were really after, then you need to be super careful about which strings you are plucking. If you can play this piece like that, it means you've really mastered it. If you like this tutorial and Coffee Break Harp, please consider purchasing Happy Birthday or my other harp arrangements. When you're doing this, you help me to keep working on these weekly videos. If you cannot buy the music right now, please instead share this video with your friends or on your social media. It's free, but it really helps a lot. And finally, remember to subscribe so you can be the first to hear about the new materials. I'll see you here for another episode of Coffee Break Harp next Friday. Take care for now. Bye!